Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. In Psalm 147, we have the psalmist providing us a proper approach to God. And it's an approach to God that he desires. Now, starting in verse 10, it says, He, that is God, does not delight in the strength of the horse. He does not take pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord favors those who fear him, those who wait for his loving kindness. And so here the psalmist recognizes the fact that God's not impressed with our strength, but he's impressed with those who fear him and that those and those who wait for his loving kindness. In both of those aspects are important. We need to both fear the Lord, but also to wait for his loving kindness or trust in his love. If either one of those elements are missing in the way that we approach God, we're going to have a misguided uh, walk before the Lord. For instance, one who fears the Lord, that is, has a deep respect for God, really uh, has reverence for God and recognizes the fact that there are uh, consequences for one's actions if they begin to rebel against him. Uh, the Lord does discipline those whom he loves. Um, there might be some who uh, only fear the Lord, but don't really trust in his love. And that type of approach to God is one that's uh, solely based on fear and really is a an approach that is almost destined for failure because a person can't keep God's law perfectly. And none of us are perfect in the way that we walk before God. And if we don't really trust in his love and don't recognize the fact that he yes, holds us accountable, but at the same time loves us and forgives us when we turn back to him, then we might uh, despair and might even give up and just think that it's too hard to please the Lord. There's no way I can ever uh, be pleasing to him. And then maybe even altogether just give up trying. But the opposite is true as well. A person might trust in the love of God, and might very much believe that God is a God of love, and they know the passages in connection to the love of God, but they don't have a deep respect for God. They don't respect his authority in their lives. And so they might think, well, the Lord loves me, and so uh, it doesn't matter if I commit a sin over here or if I'm involved in this type of activity that's displeasing to the Lord over here, over there. Um, I can live however I want because God's love will cover everything. And I can just live however I want. And there's no fear of the Lord. There's no respect or reverence for God. And that too could be a misguided approach because a person would then try to abuse God's grace, try to uh, take advantage of God's love for them, and end up living a life that's very much displeasing to the Lord and in a, uh, engage in a life that's rebellious to Him. And so, this verse, verse 11, is very important in helping us to have a balanced view of God. There's a sense in which we do need to fear the Lord. That is, we need to respect the Lord, have reverence for God, to recognize the fact that He is the ultimate authority in our lives and that we need to obey Him. But we also need to trust in His love as well and recognize the fact that we we do want to follow Him. We do respect and love and, and uh, look up to His authority but at the same time, when we those times when we fall, when we fall short, we return back to the lo to the Lord, uh, trusting in His love, coming back to Him as the prodigal son comes back to the Father, knowing that He has open arms to receive us once again, and to set our feet aright, so that we can begin down that path that uh, He has set before us, the paths of righteousness. So let's let this verse guide us in our approach to God. Uh, let's both fear the Lord, but also wait for his loving kindness. And in doing so, we'll have a great balanced view of God and a proper uh, walk before him. So these are some things we can reflect on and think about as we do a reading today. For that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.